a new garden doesn't always mean a new gardener. Diane Basandowski's love for gardening was rekindled this year and helped create the front garden of her home. She let us know how much work actually went into it. Uh, so this is our new garden out front. Um, we ripped everything out from the garden earlier this year and we started from scratch. We had these giant lilac trees in front of our windows that blocked our view and so my husband rented a little hoe and we took everything out and then I replanted everything. Yes, new stuff. Diane has always been an avid gardener all her life, mostly learning from her parents at a very young age. Life got busy and for a while, Diane fell away from gardening completely. However, with this new project, Diane's love for gardening was sparked and she explained why she really does need it in her life. That's a good question. Um, I used to garden lots. Uh, my mom and dad are, were avid gardeners. My dad was, my mom is. And I think that, and in the past I've always planted a garden and lots of flowers and I think life just kind of got busy and I got away from it and this year I decided to get all hands in and after doing this project I realized how much it's, I need to do it. Good for the soul. Now that gardening has blossomed back into her life, Diane's front garden is only just getting started. She let us in on what's next for the garden and painted us a picture of what she had planned. That's a good question. No, it's not finished. It's a work in progress. Um, I still need to lay some, um, um, like some landscaping wood chips to finish it off. It's very, the soil is quite hard, so you need something that's going to keep the moisture. And just to finish it off, like the dirt doesn't look very nice. Um, we experimented with some new plants this year. My daughter really wanted roses, and I'm really loving them, so I think we're going to put in some more roses. And next year, we will we'll add a few more shrubs. Like every garden, it needs a little work to get it where it's going. According to Diane, with these simple steps, you'll get there in no time. Oh, I think it's quite simple. And maybe that's just the way that I was taught. You get your flower. My dad taught me how to dig the hole. Um, you put your flower in, you need a bit of fertilizer, and my mom tells me that you must water, 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 water regularly, and that's it. I think it's, I find it quite simple. Or maybe I just don't know a lot about it yet. <laughs> Proud with the work she had done, Diane threw her name into our Beautiful Gardens contest. When asked why, she told us she was inspired by her daughter. It was a piece of her dad, and she was proud of what her little garden had become. I think maybe because I was kind of proud of it, and I think it's a little piece of my dad. He was such a gardener, and he taught me a lot about gardening, and my daughter enters every year, and I thought, ah, why not? I'll just throw my name in. Gardens take on many shapes and forms. Whether it be a flower garden, zen garden, or even a vegetable garden, they all have a special place in our hearts. In the heart of Ruth Hill, 
vegetables reign. With a gorgeous vegetable garden, Ruth has spent many hours grooming and making sure her vegetables get everything they need. She does gardening for the physical benefit as well as her love for making things grow. It gets me outside in the fresh air with exercise. I love nurturing growing things. Her vegetable garden has grown and blossomed into something absolutely wondrous. With a range of plants, including asparagus, strawberries, and raspberries, Ruth's garden has everything the heart could desire. She believes having control over your food and how it's harvested is a vital and necessary thing that people should be looking to do more often. I think it's vitally important these days for people to take control of their own food supply and to go organic without chemicals, and I like to teach people how to do that. Ruth's vegetable garden doubles as a classroom where she teaches new gardeners about the benefits of growing food organically and how to do it. She gives people the grand tour of her garden and even puts up posters to display certain facts about each plant. We decided to ask Ruth what kind of advice she gives her pupils. Her answers didn't disappoint. I think that person who is new at it should start with the thing they most enjoy and don't try to please anyone but themselves. And just learn as you go and go at your own pace. Amazingly, this garden was only started this year. Already blossoming, Ruth understandably couldn't pick just one part that she favorited more. I have a lot of favorite parts because I just started this year. The raspberries are new, they're not established yet but they're coming along. The strawberries are new. They're only one planted since last fall, and they're coming. And the asparagus, I got 25 uh, working crowns out of 25, so I feel very successful. They were just started this month. And another thing is uh, I'm trying to teach people to succession crop their potatoes so that you have early, middle, and late and you don't get the whole rush of labor all in one weekend. Ruth's garden is a spectacle to behold. With her caring heart and her wonderful green thumb, she created a vegetable garden filled with delicious things. She wanted to leave us with one last thought before we left. There's a real joy in passing on the legacy of gardening to your children and grandchildren. As effortless as it may seem, taking a step from indoor gardening to outdoor gardening is like taking on an entirely different beast. Sandra Jakes has always been surrounded by gardening, but decided to take the step to outdoor gardening a few years back, and she hasn't looked back since. Usually I spend my time indoors with the plants, but outside, only in the last few years really. My mom had wonderful gardens when we were growing up, but I've been working and uh, doing other things, so the garden outside wasn't the priority, but I'm liking it. 
Sometimes, trying to find the time for gardening can be hard. Work, family, and other hobbies can come into play and take away the time you want to spend on your garden. Sandra knows that feeling all too well. This year, she finally had the chance to work on her garden as much as she wanted. She showed us how she's constantly making her garden evolve into something bigger and better. I love gardening. This is the first year I've been able to spend pretty much all the time that I want gardening. I enjoy it lots, um, so I'm every year I'm tweaking it. I continue to try and make it evolve and add the temporary ones, the flower baskets and the hanging baskets that I like so much because they provide the, cup, uh, the color and the different aspect to it. And all the greenery is just lovely. I love the flowers that blossom and puttering outside. With her garden, Sandra has tried a multitude of different things to make it the unique and colorful garden it is today. And of course, we had to ask her what her favorite part was. Well, I'm really pleased with my ones that I planted this year, the hanging, no, not the hanging basket. They would be hanging if they weren't in that lovely planter. And this planter, and then the ones over there that are nice and tall and spiky and blue. With the number of beautiful gardens in Chetwin, it's clear to see this town is full of avid gardeners. Sandra gave us some advice, and that was simply to like what you do. Like what you do, uh, visit a good nursery, share with your friends. Um, I'm understanding there are a lot of really nice and good gardeners in Chetwin, and they have, I think, a seed swapping thing at the um, library as well. So, and learn. Garden doesn't always have to be grand or extravagant to make somewhere feel like home. Anne Sigwin brought her home to life with potted flowers and a few vegetable plants as well. She fondly remembers living in the country with her garden and decided her place needed a touch of home. Well, I used to live in the country and I had a huge garden and now I'm in the city, well, in town. And it's like, I want my flowers back. So I got the boxes and then I found the plants and there it is. garden is flourishing with petunias, her favorite flowers. When asked why she liked petunias so much, she stated that they were always in bloom. Don't be fooled into thinking a small garden is less work. Anne explained that even with her potted plants, she still faced unique troubles with her garden. This made Anne a quick and efficient problem solver. And the wind is really bad in this area because last year I tried the same thing with smaller pots, like maybe shorter, and the wind blew them all off. So these ones are screwed onto the deck.
Elizabeth Hogan's garden is proof that after years of work, a garden can be something magical and awe-inspiring. With a little help from neighbors and friends, Elizabeth's garden turned into what it is today. Okay, well, my garden. Welcome to my garden. <laughs> uh, I started my garden, as I said, eight years ago. Um, started with nothing and um, started planting um, with help from neighbors and buying things, and uh, here's my result. With such an extravagant garden, trying to pick out a favorite seems like it would be difficult. However, Elizabeth knew the answer right away. Uh, I would have to say my favorite part is my peonies. I love my peonies. <laughs> and I love my lilies. This, this entry here, yeah. I, I like it all, but my favorite is the peonies when they bloom. With a garden like this, we had to ask Elizabeth what her secret was. The answer was surprising. Her tips for new gardeners was simply to have patience and do your research. Patience, <laughs> a lot of patience. Um, yeah, like when I first started gardening, I had, like I said, I had a lot of help from the uh, from the, my neighbors and uh, friends, and and they were the same. Like you have to be very patient and. Uh, uh, watching, you know, and I love to watch things grow, but as I said, patience and um, uh, a lot of research too. You, you know what, Mr. Google is great. What you don't know, you ask Mr. Google and he educates you on a lot of things. My husband is very avid on reading up on um, maintenance, how to maintain your garden, you know, what types of um, flowers are good for your zones, which, um, you know, um, we live in the north after all, so a lot of things I would love to plant doesn't survive here, so yeah, so that would be about my advice, patience. <laughs> Originally from Newfoundland, Elizabeth has been gardening for almost all of her life. Her entire family gardens, and she learned most of her tips and tricks from them. The biggest challenge she's had to face so far was moving up to northern BC and having to learn what plants can grow here and what ones can't. Well, I, um, I gardened when I, when I uh, lived in, in uh, Newfoundland, of course. Uh, I have sisters, uh, 11 of them actually, 11 sisters, who are all into gardening, basically. They love to garden. I grew up in a very rural, small area where my dad was uh, pretty good at, um, and my mom, we grew our own vegetable gardens and she loved to plant. So a lot of little tips I picked up from there. But then when you move to a different, as I said, different zone, like we're living in the north, a lot of the things change. Um, and I still kept that interest so and my husband he loves to garden as well so between the two of us we uh, we have picked up a lot of uh, uh, you know the common interests in the gardening and, and I, I just love it it's for me it's a, it's very therapeutic I, I, I can come out in the evenings after a long day and just start weeding and just get on my knees here and just it's like a meditation to me it's a it's a stress release it's I just love it it's, it's just you know and, and this is my result so when I see this it's like yeah it's all worth it at the end of the day, it's worth it, yes. Elizabeth and her husband spend many hours out in the garden, making sure the plants are watered, the weeds are pulled, and the plants get everything they need. It's worth every minute, according to Elizabeth, especially since the payout is seeing something this remarkable and beautiful every day. Just, I hope that people, I get a lot of compliments, my neighbors stop and yell and say, oh, your garden is beautiful. So I love the compliments and I love people to come and enjoy it. It's, it's, this is what it's for, it's for people other than me to enjoy. And when people like you see that, you know, it's worth showing, then that to me is, it says it all. It's just beautiful and I love it and enjoy.
Shelley Proctor Goulet has many different gardens on her property, from her marvelous rock garden that welcomes you as you drive in, to her greenhouse filled with yummy looking vegetables, to her beautiful vegetable garden. We got the chance to talk to Shelley and asked how long she had been gardening for. I've been, I've been living here for 18 years, so I've been doing this particular garden probably at least 10. It, I expanded it this year and then had some 10 year soil, 10 year old soil delivered about two years ago. So it seems to really like that new soil. So yeah, I've been just kind of trying to get it bigger, a little bit bigger. And this year I didn't plant everything really close together like I usually do. <laughs> Gardens are notorious for their upkeep and hard work. Shelley explained her favorite and not so favorite parts of keeping up her vegetable garden. Uh, well, I like to plant it. I mean, I'm not really the, the weeding part was, they were bigger than the garden a week ago. So I got a rototiller in and weeded it. That, that's the part I hate the most is the weeds, but the other part is I like to eat the stuff. That's the best part. Aside from running her own business, Shelly always makes sure she has time to garden. Her tips to do gardeners is just not to give up and start small if you can. Don't give up when there's tons of weeds because it does look overwhelming. Um, just start small if you can and if you're going to do big, well, you got lots of work. Whether it's a flower or a vegetable garden, the results are pretty well worth all the work put into it. Shelley believes gardening is a great stress reliever and looks forward to going out whenever she can. Just that I like gardening and flowers and it's, it's, it's fun to do. It gives you lots of alone space if you want to just have your own space to go and sit. I just sit down, I don't kneel or anything. And I sit and weed every evening usually. Um, no, gardening is is a kind of like a stress reliever, so that's a good thing. Peggy and Barry Ryan's garden is an Eden on Earth. Bursting with flowers and veggies, it's clear to see how much work went into the Ryan's garden. Barry made it clear for any new gardeners looking to create something as beautiful as this, they better be prepared to do the work. <laughs> Me, I have tips for gardeners? No, I don't have too many tips that go and get into it. Got to do a lot of work. Barry explained that his wife was the mastermind behind what flowers to get, where they would be planted, and overall just how the garden would look. Barry is mostly in charge of helping his wife plant the flowers and the vegetables, and helping maintain them. Don't be fooled in thinking this garden was a summer of work. Barry explained how this garden has been 20 years in the making. 
how long we've been in this house? Over 20 years in this house, so this garden's been here over 20 years. Well, we've been doing this since we've been out. There was a bit of a garden here, I think. This part here, not this part here, we put this all in. So this little part down here and this part over here was uh, here, but not, not like it is now. I mean, there was a part of a garden here, but everything else we put in. So we put in, say, 75% of the garden. Since the garden has parts of it that are flowers and parts that are vegetables, we had to ask Barry, did he prefer vegetables over flowers or flowers over vegetables? Well, I, I, I like doing the vegetables for me. My wife does vegetables too, but for me it's just vegetables, you just leave them. Like potatoes for instance, right now, it's just I don't do nothing with them basically, I just leave them there. They're easiest, but flowers a lot of work, but a lot prettier too. So I do like flowers. I do like the roses. And roses is my favorite flower, definitely. So that's why we got so many. Peggy and Barry both work on the garden together accomplishing something unique and absolutely beautiful. When we asked what got Barry into gardening, he simply said, his wife. Uh, well, I didn't really garden that much, but you sort of like, your wife does it, you get into it. So, even though I go out and do some, I do, I do some dead ending, but not much weeding. I don't like weeding, it's too hard on my back. She'd get on her knees and she could do it a lot easier than I does it. So But it is relaxing. You think you're only out in the garden one hour and you look at the clock and it's like four o'clock in the evening. Yeah, you're out here about four or five hours. think beautiful gardens, you think of a place filled with decadent smells, bright colors paraded everywhere, and a place that seems to be a homegrown paradise. Frank Salt and his wife Audrey have created just that at Salt's Nursery. Originally from England, the couple came to Canada to seek a new life, and they shared with us how they managed to call Chetwind their home. Yeah, we came to uh, Canada in uh, May of 66 and uh, we, went, we first landed in Toronto and we was there for uh, two or three weeks and we didn't like it so I had a, we had uh, two or three hundred dollars left enough for a train fare 
and we got on the train to uh, to Vancouver, which there was me and my wife Audrey and two daughters, Julie and Jackie, and she was pregnant with Joanne. I was six months. Six months pregnant with uh, Joanne, yeah. So we get to Vancouver and we get off the train. We stood on the, I don't know whether you've been on the station. We are on the bridge and looking towards um, North Vancouver and thinking how beautiful it was and uh, much different than Toronto. You know, it was Canada to us then. And we lived in Chet Villa for a few years, yeah, until I bought this place here. And, or we bought it. Yes. It's always in. This is mine, this is mine. I said two bucks, half of the Anyway, so. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't leave Chetwin. I'm always glad to get back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I... Frank was a miner by trade, but always had a soft spot in his heart for gardening. Inspired by family, he tried multiple times to find where his passion for gardening could take him, but faced many roadblocks along the way. Well, yeah, my mother had a big garden, and and you know th there was an old greenhouse in the middle of a field, and I always wanted to go fix it. So we asked the farmer if we could fix it up, and it had brick walls, four feet, you know, four foot brick walls. It was about forty foot long by twenty five feet. But anyway, the bricks was good, and the wood was good, but some of the glass was out of it. And uh, we had cleaned it up, both of us, and she washed all the pots, which was all clay pots in them days. And um, I put all the glass back in, and we were just ready to go. And then the bloody farmer came and said, we're going to sell it. I uh, sold it because he picked it up. <laughs> yeah. So all that really knocked me down for quite a while. And, and uh, you know, I just wanted, I didn't know what I wanted to. So I, I thought I wanted to grow mushrooms. So then I was looking for a barn to, to grow mushrooms and you know, it never ended. You know. Thankfully, Frank got his wish and Salt's Nursery was born. Along with gardening, Frank makes extravagant birdhouses. The Salt's are well known for their willingness to help out and donate to Chetwind whenever they can. Leah Salt, Frank's granddaughter, explained why this only helped prove the case for Frank receiving the Joanne Roberts Memorial Award. Grandpa's been doing this for longer than I've been alive. Um, he'll say every day that he doesn't deserve anything, it's just what he likes to do. But I think he deserves it because he does, he's the only person he goes out of his way to try and help even the other nurseries in town. He tries to he gives deals to people just if they're short of change, even when they come in here. Um, but he deserves it in a million other ways. So, like it's, it's really hard to actually put into words because he does so much for. And like I know he hasn't been doing the town's flowers in a long time, but he has like the amount of work that it takes for him just to run this. Like my auntie Joanne has been doing it for the last few years, but for him to do that more or less by himself run these things and be at 70 years old, get up in the middle of the night to go stoke the fireplace just to make sure that the greenhouse is warm. I couldn't tolerate that myself, getting up at the crack of stupid to go ahead and stoke fires in all the greenhouses at multiple times in the night. Um, he works really hard to keep his place. Everybody always thinks it's my grandma because flowers are grandma, but it's, it's all grandpa. Frank agrees that this nursery was good, but couldn't be more thankful to the people of Chetwind. He believes it's the people of Chetwin that gave him their business, who made it worthwhile and truly made his nursery a success. Uh, I think because we look after the plants and, and um, the quality of our plants was always good, not, not every time, but most of the time. And um, we never let them get, you know, I wouldn't put anything out what didn't look good, you know, good enough. So. That was one part of it, and oh, I just want to say, you know, we might be good too, but the, most of the people what comes down here have been very good, and they all come back, and and you know, the women have come when they're pregnant, and they've had their children, and now their children are grown up, 
and their children are coming here, you know, which is nice. And, and there's nothing like when we've had a rough winter and you hear the women coming here and it's all colorful and there's a smile on the faces and they're all having a chat. They've not seen somebody for a while and stuff like that. Being a family business, Leah remembers the many summers she worked with her granddad and told us what she's going to miss the most out of it all. Coming down here and see, hearing all the people, especially like, I love selling the flowers and then people going, don't worry, I'll be back. <laughs> and you would see them three or four times in that same day coming back. And coming down here for the opening day is like my, the, the best thing ever because it's so busy. You see all these people coming home with all the flowers that your grandparents grew and you go driving through town and seeing all that work that we did throughout the whole entire town. Is, I'll miss that so, so much because it's, you're not, I don't know, I'm very biased, but I think my grandfather's stuff is the best out of all the other ones in this town. <laughs> Salt Nursery may be retiring this year, but Frank isn't quite done with his greenhouse yet. I'm going to do a bit of something here, I can't. Uh, I'll probably take some stuff up town, yeah. Good For market, sure. Market. Yeah, maybe a little bit more, I don't know. It's yes, up to the yes, wife, yes, it's up to her. I'm not going to marijuana, you know. <laughs> she said she's going to smoke it. She said she's going to smoke. I'm going to smoke cigarettes, but I'm going to start puffing. As the contest rules, the person being awarded the Joanne Roberts Memorial Award is someone who clearly has been a good neighbor and has pride in our little yeah, community. Yes, Frank Salt not, not only meets these standards, but he exceeds them tenfold. With his help, Chetwin is a little more colorful, a little brighter, and a whole lot happier. But I'm going to start puffing. <laughs>